Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. Uh, this is not Foundry VTT. I'm in Figma. Why am I in Figma? Uh, so we had a comment on the last video, Curse of Strahd. Um, we were looking at the the fact that there's the Strahd reloaded, uh, re not rewrite, um, uh, appendium, if you like, um, that builds on the original module, adds some clarification and things like that. Um, the Rock on the Shelf asked a question about running things like this, the complicated module with bits all over the place, hence the uh, Reloaded uh, project. Uh, how do you go about organising yourself, especially as a newer DM, how do you go about organising yourself and trying to get ready for running things like that, especially when they can be complex? Uh, that's why we're in Figma, because for me, Figma is the tool that I use to do this. So. There is no one correct way. Everybody has a different way, but I do understand that if you are a new DM or GM, whatever the role playing game is, obviously, you know, I focus mostly on D&D, &D, that's what I play mostly, um, but it applies to any of these. As the game master, you're expected to create the, the framework that the story gets built on. So you need to be able to do that and need to be organized. So this is this is my approach and how I choose to do it. I know other DMs do it this way, but I also know some DMs do it very, very different. Do not over prepare for too much of the upcoming adventure because I guarantee you're going to have wasted a lot of that time because what you're expecting the players to do is not what they will do. They will probably do the opposite, not on purpose, occasionally not on purpose um but they're tr they're having their story and they should be writing their own story and you need to be able to flex with that to make sure they're able with you to tell the story that they want to so the big advice the big thing chunk it down make it into pieces that you can manage um the strad is a big campaign it, it it will last for many many sessions lots of bits in it you can't prep the whole thing in one go even if you wanted to uh, you shouldn't because it's you don't know what they're going to do so this is my approach to it first of all i break it down into chapters now when i'm working with foundry i like to break down those chapters into scenes because then it tells me oh what am i building okay so for me that's a really useful way to do it but even if i'm not doing that i still want to chunk it down into inverted commas scenes so that i know what i need to prepare so first of all the very first thing you need to consider is what's going to happen in your session zero okay so i've just called this setup i've just got this uh, area here session zero I need to make sure I'm setting expectations for the players. What kind of a game is this going to be? Um, you know, uh, what what are the the rules around behaviour? What content might it be in? Give the players options to go. Do you know what? That's not for me. That's not the kind of game I want to play. Uh, that's okay. You don't have to. Obviously, if they all say they don't want to play that kind of game, you're in a bit of trouble. Um, but give them the option of knowing that this is going to be for Strad a gothic horror. Um, or something else, this is going to be a dungeon delve, or this is going to be role play heavy, or there will be romance in this. Um, give them an idea of what you're planning it to feel like so they can choose whether that's what they want to do, and it will help them create a character that is going to fit with that theme. It's like, right, this adventure is going to be based on the high seas. Uh, you're going to spend most of your time on ships and exploring wrecks and visiting islands and things like that the players instantly know ah right a swashbuckling character will fit uh, not a druid of the forests that's probably not going to be a particularly good choice of character but somebody might go, oh brilliant i've always wanted to play uh, a druid of the sea you know it's like here's a golden opportunity to do something different so share that with them it's really important um and part of that session zero of course you're going to go through character creation Make sure that they are understanding what that theme is so that they can build their backgrounds into it. Uh, it makes sense to a certain extent. I mean, you can have outliers, but if everybody's an outlier, just like build your character and then you throw them into a situation, sometimes it's a bit weird. Are there any background hooks that you want them to have? So in Curse of Strahd Reloaded, there are features and hooks that they can take and trinkets that they can have that will follow them through the campaign. Brilliant. Good. You don't need to do that. 
but you at least need to know what their basic background is so that later on you can try and hook that back into the adventure it's like well i'm in search for my long lost brother who was kidnapped by ape men okay well that's important maybe when they're going to the forests of cholt or whatever it is the rainforests and jungles uh maybe there's a clue for that and i could actually make that into a hook for a side quest or, or something like that so really important that you know that also how deadly is this going to be is this going to be look you have to be really 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 stupid to die in this campaign or you can expect total party kill <laughs> every few sessions make sure you have an understanding and again your players know what to expect if you're playing absolute hardcore and you're expecting player characters to die let them know that that's the case um you know and if they all object tone it down so agree on that uh, and of course agree if there's any house rules that you have okay so this is the way that we handle this particular type of thing this spell is not allowed or this only works in this this particular way Sorry, had to cough. All oh, right, so that's session zero. There's loads of videos and loads of advice out there how to do session zero, but this is basically what I do, and every party's different. My next thing is, what is my first kind of chapter? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean first session, because this could go really quick in one session, or it could take three, four, five, depending on the players. So I don't call them sessions. I call them chapters um, and the scenes within there. So I know that into the mists which is what i'm calling my chapter one for curse of strad i need so i've got my little purple things here just using say right that's one scene is the fastani camp and that's where they're going to be having that first meeting with these traveler folk and they're first going to the fireside story etc that's really important that that happened or that scene exists what's going to get out of that scene they are going to get a direct quest from this find madam eva's campsite that's a direct quest they're going to be given go and do this please uh, and i've made this green to show that that is a direct we want you to do this i'm also in theory that they, they will go off and do that so i need to make sure i've also prepared prepared the journey towards madam eva's camp i know they're not going to get there for quite a while yet but they think they're that's where they're heading so I need to prepare a scene for Svalich Road. In Foundry, literally prepare that scene with sounds and lights and everything else. Just for a normal tabletop, I need to make notes of what happens, descriptors, so that I can, you know, might want to draw a map, whatever it is, so that I can detail that. There's going to be a wolf encounter here. So I'm just going to pop that on. I don't need to write out what the whole encounter is. But it's just like, right, yeah, they're going to have their first combat as part of this. Now they find on the Svalich Road, they find a corpse and if they search it, they find a letter. And in there, there is a effectively a hint that talks about the Burgomaster needing help. So the Burgomaster um, in the village of Barovia. Now they don't necessarily know. Uh, no, they do know it's in Barovia. Um, but anyway, that's a clue that leads to a quest. It's not a direct, hello party, please go and do this quest. It's a, there is something here you could investigate that could become a quest. So... My arrows are quests, but I've got directed quests, and then I've got these almost like side quests, okay? So that's the way I'm doing this. This tells me everything I need to know that's important to cover during this chapter. Meeting the Vistani and being told to find Madame Eva's camp. The Svalich Road, where they're with some wolves that will help set some of the scene, and they will probably find this letter for the Burgomaster don't need anything else at this point um, once i've got session zero done i can then start fleshing this out with my maps and things all right next one the death house so for me the way that i've got this running is i know that into the mists you know once they start this bit actually the they they don't have an awful lot of choice they end up at the death house so they will explore the death house i need to have that built i've built that in foundry if you've been watching those you've seen that but what is the important things that add to my story that happen in this scene? This is the first time they directly come across the name of Strad von Zalovich. Okay, they find it in a letter. It's referenced. The the um, the 
the spirits of the uh, of the cultists are chanting they don't use Strahd's name but they're chanting about it and learning about this master of being um, this Strahd person death house for me is all about setting the tone and making them realize that from here to here is a very different world it feels different it smells different the weather's different and I really want to make sure that death house is about them getting an understanding of the world they've now entered that's my primary purpose of the death house as well as leveling I'll come back to leveling all right, so they finish the Death House, then they're into the village of Barovia themselves, and there's a number of locations here. Uh, Blood of the Vine Tavern, Mad Mary's House, the Burgomaster's Mansion, the church, um, the churchyard, etc. So again, in, when they go to the Blood of the Vine, there is a direct quest. I want you to escort my daughter, Arena, to Valaki, Vel however you wish to pronounce it. Doesn't matter how you pronounce it, just try and be consistent. <laughs> Uh, they may go to Mad Mary's house where they find out about a missing daughter. Mad Mary doesn't specifically say, go and rescue my daughter. She just says, whoa, my daughter's missing. They might go on a quest to go and find the daughter. They might incidentally run into them later on. But it's not a directed quest. Burgermaster's Mansion. Okay, support my daughter. She's in the Burgermaster's Mansion. We go to the Burgermaster's Mansion and the daughter says, okay, that's fine. But you have to help me borrow, uh, borrow? <laughs> bury uh, Collian okay who was the burgomaster so again it's a very directed quest i won't do that until you've done this okay so now they head off to the church now what do they learn at the church there's no directed quests but they learn about vampire spawn is a thing so it's the first time they've really heard the word vampire associated with this place and they're possibly going to poo themselves great that's what i want them to do want them to start piecing things together going oh hang on a minute we heard about this strad fellow now does vampire spawn we're hearing about the dark lord i wonder if these are all connected hell yeah they're connected <laughs> i don't want to tell them they're connected i want them to work that out but they also hear about this thing about the march of the dead that happens at night now the there's a very good chance when they hear about that they, they are going to choose to be out and about at night to see this for themselves but they might not they just hear about it they might go oh, stupid peasants you know don't know what you're talking about so i'm not going to prep any of this scene in any detail until they're actually in the death house itself and i got the feeling i know where they're going but i do need this level Okay, because if they derail and things go, astro uh, you know, completely awry, they go, no, stuff you, Vistani, we're not going that way. Okay, brilliant. They're not going to pick up that quest. The great thing about Curse of Strahd is the mist can still descend and it can still stick them outside the death house. Okay, so there's other ways around it with this. Um, but I need to make sure at some point they're aware about Madam Eva and her camp. Okay, so that could come as a vision or a dream or something like that that I can make fit with everything else that's going on that will try to encourage them back onto the main path or at least in the rough direction. Um, so yeah, if they did say we're not doing the Vastani camp, stuff you, don't care, that's fine. I'm going to let them get halfway towards the next thing they want to do before the mists descend. They hear wolves very much like Svalich Road. They hear wolves in the woods. Um, they run from the wolves, probably. I want them to feel scared. I want them to get overwhelmed. They run into the mists, and the next thing they know, they're appearing outside the death house. They can't escape arriving at the death house. We don't railroad our players, except in this one case, because it's important that they feel out of control here. Um, so I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, know what you're going to do here fill in some details here once you've had your session zero you can then detail this once this is detailed you start running that section you can start building in there's going to be references players are going to do things they're going to say things they're going to make comments of things if they make if you know if one of the players says like oh no my worst fear in snakes like, oh is it now okay right well i haven't built these bits yet so guess what i'm putting in somewhere not going to overuse it but it's definitely going to be a snake and it might be you change a portrait on a wall to a snake 
Uh, and then that player feels that that snake is watching them as they move around the room, right? It's going to freak them hell out. It doesn't have to be a fight. It doesn't even have to be following them around the room, but they get that feeling. It adds to a lot of the creepiness that comes with the death house. So that's why you don't want to prepare the death house and go, that's fine, all job done, bush, not changing it at all before you've even got session zero out of the way. Okay, so yes, okay, in my Foundry series, I have indeed built the Death House and I'm now moving on to this area before my guys have finished that session zero, but that's because we're building the main world. I will change it. <laughs> I will twi twi twiddle with it and adapt it as I go. Um, but obviously I want to show you guys how I'm building it and what my plan is, um, knowing I have to change my plan. So, but my suggestion to you guys is don't plan this in detail before you get up here because this plan has to change as a result of things that happen in the death house which has to change as a result of things that happen when they go into the mists which should change as a result of character generation. If they all decide to make paladins <laughs> that can make a very different encounter at the Vistani camp. So adjust, you need to be ready to adjust. Okay, And that, that's the key to being a good DM don't railroad be ready to adjust what's best for the story what's most fun for everybody that's the right way to do it it's that is that's it that's simple it's the only rule there is is you're here to have fun if it's not fun change it if it is fun do some more of it yeah um on that kind of theme bearing in mind that curse of strad is a gothic horror and it's supposed to be terrifying if your party pretty much laughs their legs off as they go through this gothic horror it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing at all the fact that they are finding the whole thing hilarious because they're having fun okay, it's not designed you know we're not expecting our players to laugh all the way through it but if they do who's who's losing there nobody everybody's winning so as a dm don't get frustrated because they're not playing the way you want um that makes you a bad dm it, it's as simple as that they're not your playthings. Well, I don't know. You could argue that. <laughs> They're there to have fun too. Okay, so um, obviously, please leave comments, advice, your own tips, because there's loads of DMs. Most of the people who watch my videos are DMs. They're running their own games. They may not be Dungeons & Dragons. Um, but chuck all your tips down in the comments so others coming, you know, even experienced DMs can go, oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Chuck them in the comments really really useful um rock on the shelf i hope that's kind of giving you an idea about how to chunk these things down um what are the key elements you want the players to walk away from each scene with everything else can change it doesn't matter oh they burnt down the death house did they so what have they got an idea of the tone yes brilliant you've succeeded did they hear about strad well they've got an inkling they heard the name but they don't know anything else brilliant you've succeeded do they know that they should be trying to help Irina? Do they know Irina's got a problem with um, with her father not being buried? If the answer is yes to those, you've had a successful session. Even if they have then set fire to Mad Mary's house and the church is now under siege by goblins or whatever, <laughs> whatever it might be. Okay, They're walking away with these key bits of information. You don't need anything else like that. So I, I would honestly... I almost ended this video. I, I would honestly continue doing this, just chunking it down into these chapters. This might be three sessions and things. One thing I definitely was going to say about it, XP advancement. If you're using XP, you need to make sure you're kind of balancing this so that you know what the pace is going to be. If you're using milestones, it's much easier. Make each chapter what your planned milestone is. I'm expecting by the time they get through the woods, they've dealt with the Vistani, they're going to gain a level. They're going to the Death House at level two. They're going to come out of the Death House at level three. They're then going to do all this stuff in town, which includes quite a lot of stuff, which may or may not get them to level four, depending on what they're doing. But try and have a, an idea in your head, what are the milestones um, that you want them to tick off in order to gain a level? Now, I'm going to be mean to my players. They, they're not going to gain... Um, they're, they're always going to be running as one level behind the module suggests that they are. And the reason why is because I've got a bigger group. I've got potentially seven players in Curse of Strahd. Um, if it's aimed at four, my party suddenly, you know, oh, every fight's going to be easy. So they're always going to be running a level behind. 
um, to help balance that a bit and then balancing on the fly. Right, I've rambled on far too much yet again. Comments, people, help each other out. Brilliant suggestions, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, ideas that you think people can try, especially new DMs and things like that. Let's really help them out as much as we can. Of course, if you're not subscribed, do so. Uh, and like videos whenever you feel inclined to. Really, really helpful. And I want to point out, because somebody asked the other day, uh, in the link of this description, there is a coffee. If you wished to donate me a cup of tea, uh, there is a Kofi coffee link that you can do that for, as well as a link to YouTube membership if you're feeling particularly crazy. Uh, thank you very much, guys. You take care, and I'll see you in the next video.